What if I told you Ethereum is about to undergo the most important transformation since the merge? A change that could redefine how data, scalability, and security work on the world's biggest smart contract network. This isn't just another upgrade. This is Ethereum's next evolution, the Fusaka upgrade. Welcome back to The Block Analyst, your deep dive source for everything crypto, blockchain, and decentralized innovation. If you're new here, subscribe and turn on notifications because today we're breaking down Ethereum's Fusaka upgrade in full. No hype, no fluff, just the data, the architecture, and what it means for the future of Ethereum. Ethereum's roadmap has always been about three pillars, scalability, security, and decentralization. The merge solved the energy issue. The Denkin upgrade brought proto-Denk sharding, a first step toward better data availability using blobs. But Fusaka? Fusaka is the moment when those concepts mature. It's the next major hard fork designed to expand Ethereum's throughput, restructure data storage, and integrate cryptographic standards that make Ethereum compatible with modern hardware security systems. At the center of this upgrade lies Peer Deus, short for Peer Data Availability Sampling. To understand it, we need to recall EIP-4844, the so-called proto-dank sharding. That proposal introduced blobs, temporary data packets used mainly by Layer 2 rollups to post proofs and compress transaction data. The issue? Each Ethereum node still had to download all blob data, even if it didn't need to store it long term. PeerDAS changes everything. Here's how it works. Each blob is split into eight segments using Reed Solomon erasure coding. Only four segments are needed to reconstruct the entire blob. Ethereum nodes are organized into subnets. Each subnet stores only a portion of the blob data. When the network needs to verify data availability, nodes simply sample parts of these distributed segments. The result? Dramatically lower bandwidth requirements, lower storage pressure, and a massive leap in scalability that still retains decentralization. Initially, blocks can carry up to 10 blobs, but this number will gradually increase, potentially up to 48 blobs per block, once the network proves it can handle the load. This mechanism enables rollups to post more data per second with lower fees. It means cheaper transactions, faster confirmations, and a more scalable Ethereum that still retains decentralization. One of the most overlooked updates is EIP-7951, introducing support for the SecP256R1 curve, a new elliptic curve for cryptographic signatures. Ethereum currently uses SecP256K1, the same as Bitcoin, but that curve isn't supported by many secure hardware elements, like TPM chips, smart cards, or iPhone secure enclaves. By adding SecP256R1, smart contracts and wallets can leverage built-in hardware authentication. Enterprises can integrate Ethereum with existing identity infrastructures. Multi-factor and biometric verification become easier to implement directly on-chain. In other words, it bridges Ethereum to the hardware security ecosystem that powers the modern web and mobile devices. Every block in Ethereum is proposed by a validator, chosen based on a pseudo-random algorithm. Until now, validators didn't know far in advance who would be the proposer. The list could shift due to balance changes or slashing events. EIP-7917 introduces deterministic look-ahead, fixing this. It allows the proposer schedule to be known well in advance, usually two epochs ahead, improving coordination for staking pools and roll-up operators. It also strengthens transparency since everyone, including smart contracts, can verify the upcoming proposer sequence on-chain. Ethereum Virtual Machine keeps evolving. This upgrade adds the CLZ, Count Leading Zeros, opcode, a small yet significant instruction that optimizes bit-level operations. Why does it matter? Many cryptographic algorithms, compression schemes, and even mathematical computations rely on leading zero counts. Previously, these had to be done in solidity with loops, consuming a lot of gas. Now, they execute natively, faster, and cheaper. The Fusaka upgrade caps each transaction at roughly 16 million gas, EIP 7825. This prevents malicious or overly complex transactions from clogging the network and makes the overall block more predictable. 
Additionally, EIP 7918 adjusts the blob gas market, tying it partially to the main gas market. This synchronization helps avoid extreme volatility, where blob fees would sometimes crash while regular gas fees spiked, or vice versa. Now both will move more coherently, leading to more stable fees for rollups and users alike. Ethereum's virtual machine includes an operation called modular exponentiation, used in cryptography, especially in zero-knowledge proofs and RSA-style encryption. Fusaka revises how this operation is priced. Gas costs now better reflect the true computational workload. Input size is capped at 1024 bytes to prevent consensus bugs across clients. It's a technical change, but essential for consistency and security, especially as Ethereum integrates more ZK-based proof systems. Ethereum's block structure gets a firm limit. 8 megabytes for execution data and an additional 2 megabytes reserved for consensus metadata. This balance ensures that block propagation stays fast across the global network, minimizing the risk of orphaned blocks or desynchronization. It's a trade-off between scalability and reliability, but a necessary one as block payloads grow due to blob data and expanded transaction types. EIP 7892, BPO, Blob Parameter Only, Hard Forks, enables Ethereum to adjust blob parameters without changing the protocol codebase. It's like a quick configuration tweak at the consensus level. EIP 7642, Pre-merge data cleanup removes outdated data from before the merge, saving hundreds of gigabytes of storage. For full nodes, this can mean up to 530 gigabytes less disk usage, a huge efficiency boost. EIP 7910 ETH Config RPC Endpoint allows node operators and developers to query upgrade configurations directly from the client software. Useful for exchanges, bridges, and infrastructure providers who need to track upcoming hard fork parameters automatically. EIP 7935 Higher Gas Limit raises the default block gas target to 60 million, creating headroom for increased on chain activity, especially from rollups. With PeerDAS and these EIPs combined, Ethereum is effectively completing the second stage of its scalability roadmap. Here's what changes in practice. Layer 2 rollups like Arbitrum, Optimism, and Base will experience drastically lower blob posting costs. Data throughput could increase by 5 to 10x once full blob capacity is unlocked. Node efficiency improves, reducing both hardware costs and synchronization times. Validator predictability simplifies staking coordination. Smart contract execution becomes cheaper and faster due to opcode optimization. Hardware integration opens doors to enterprise and mobile level adoption. In essence, Fusaka prepares Ethereum to handle the next wave of global users, apps, and AI-driven agents interacting on-chain. Fusaka is scheduled for mainnet activation on December 3, 2025, assuming all testnets finalize smoothly. Developers are currently testing it on Holsky and Sepolia, with public test participation encouraged to verify PeerDAS network stability. Expect client updates from Geth, Nethermind, Aragon, Lighthouse, and Prism to roll out about two weeks before mainnet activation. Validators will need to upgrade both consensus and execution clients before the fork epoch to avoid being slashed or going offline. Fusaka isn't just a technical patch. It represents Ethereum's answer to two growing forces in Web3. The L2 explosion, dozens of rollups competing for data availability bandwidth, and the hardware convergence, as mobile, IoT, and enterprise systems integrate blockchain into their core operations. Ethereum is becoming the middleware of global computation, a programmable data layer secured by cryptographic proofs and distributed economics. PeerDAS gives it the bandwidth. SEP-256-R1 brings hardware trust. Deterministic proposer scheduling ensures governance consistency. All combined, Ethereum becomes more modular, resilient, and future-ready. After Fusaka, Ethereum's roadmap shifts toward full dank sharding, enabling dozens of parallel blob streams. 
Verkal trees, improving storage efficiency, and stateless clients, allowing lightweight nodes without full chain data, and integration with AI agents through standards like ERC 8004, which defines how autonomous agents interact with smart contracts. In other words, Fusaka is a bridge between today's Ethereum and the autonomous AI integrated Ethereum of the late 2020s. Fusaka isn't just another hard fork. It's the infrastructure layer for the next era of decentralized computation. It prepares Ethereum for a future where millions of rollups, wallets, dApps, and even AI agents coexist, all needing high data throughput, predictable fees, and strong cryptographic guarantees. If you found this deep dive useful, subscribe to The Block Analyst for more breakdowns of major blockchain upgrades and crypto infrastructure insights. Ethereum's future is being written block by block, and Fusaka is the next chapter.